Today, I will show you how to set up your field of view or FOV in iRacing for triple monitors. So let's get started. Proper FOV is required in iRacing and any other racing sim. Now, does it make a difference? I would argue yes, as it allows your eyes and your brain to have a correct depth of field that you would expect to see in the real world, which is very important for POV style racing sims. First, we need some measurements. I also recommend you note these in both metric and standard distances. I'm going to assume you have the same size monitor for your triples. This is critical. You will need the total width of the monitor, including bezel. Now, not screen size from corner to corner, but its actual width from left to right. And the total width of one bezel. These should be easy to get. Next, you need the distance from the left corner of your center monitor to the right corner of your right monitor in a straight line. Refer to the example here on the screen for reference in this measurement. Now we'll use this to determine the degree of angle of your side monitors a little later. Next, you need to measure the distance between your eyes and the center monitor. Finally, if you have curved monitors, you're going to need the radius curvature rating. Now, you can find this on the side of your monitor box. That should be all that we need in order to set up your proper field of view. Now we will calculate the angle of your side monitors for reference from your point of view. Use the link provided in the description below or you can type this in here uh, that you can see on the screen. When you get here, clear out any data that may exist in these boxes around the triangle and also make sure the angle unit is in degrees. Now we're going to need two of the numbers that we measured earlier for reference here. The first one is the total width in millimeters of your monitor. That does include the bezel. So for me, that would be 610 millimeters. We're going to put that here inside B and also inside A. Both of these will have the total width of your monitor, one monitor. Inside C, we're going to place the measurement for the top left corner of your center monitor to the far right corner of your right monitor and place that in here in millimeters. That's 1140 for me in this example. Once you have these here, press calculate and it will give you a result in C equals number. You're looking for this number. Pull up the calculator and we're going to take this number, 138.271, and subtract 180 from that number. Press enter, and it will give you your angle. Round this up or down to the nearest whole number. So for me, I will use 42 degrees. And that is the angle of my side monitors in relation to me and my point of view. Now that we have our data, let's open eye racing. You'll go to Options, Graphics, Monitors, and this is the information that we need for the setup. You will choose your monitor type, either three flat or three curved. Your monitor width for one monitor, including the bezel. In my case, it's 610 millimeters. Under bezel width, you will enter the width of one bezel in either metric or standard and you will enter the radius of the curvature that was listed on the side of your monitor box in my case it's 1800 in field of view calculator this is where you will enter the distance from your eyes to your center monitor for example if you were close to the monitor maybe 350 millimeters get a field of view recommended of 164. If you were further away, say 750 millimeters, you would get a field of view, which is a little more narrow, of 118 degrees. For me, 
I use 540, which gives a field of view of 140 degrees. Now, this is not my actual distance from my eyes to the monitor, but we'll discuss that theory at the conclusion of this video. So stick around for that. And these are the measurements that I use. Click done, done. Now we're gonna set up the side angle of your monitors that we calculated earlier. So let's go to the main iRacing folder, which should be under documents, iRacing. Unless you've placed it somewhere else, this is where you will find it. You're looking for the file that says Renderer DX11 Monitor. Right click that and open with the notepad, which is fine in this example. And bring that over here. If you'll scroll down, you're looking for monitor setup, and some of these numbers may look familiar to you. Right here, monitor setup is what you're looking for in this area. If you'll notice, you've got the radius of the curvature that we set, the viewing distance, the monitor width, the screen monitor, the screen width, and we have screen angles. This is what was missing from the earlier menu and what we need to set here. So what you will do is take the measurement from earlier. In our case, it was 42 degrees of angle. Place 42 and click File, Save, and that's it. The side angle of your monitors has now been calculated in accordance with your field of view. You are good to go. Hit Test and you will see your field of view with your triples, including the correct angle of your side monitors. Now let's talk about your view or seat adjustments inside the car so that you do not affect your field of view. If you just want to simply adjust the seat inside of the car, open your black boxes and go to the graphics adjustment tab. Here at the bottom, you'll see driver height. You can use this right here to move yourself up or down in the truck, in this case, or the car. However, if you want to move further back or closer forward without adjusting your field of view, we're gonna need to do something a little different. Make sure that you actually have been inside the car for a moment and then let's go to the main menu. I say that so that we can start the replay feature. Go to your cameras here at the bottom. Choose cockpit. You're back inside the car in the replay. If you're not, you may need to fast forward or rewind a little bit to get yourself inside the car. Let's pause this here. We're going to hit control and F12, which will bring up this camera edit. Now, this will allow you to change your distance from the steering wheel with inside this camera edit. By using X offset, you can move yourself back in the car, but it's not adjusting the outside and your field of view, which is so critical that we've gotten set. And you can see as it looks like we're actually moving inside of the car. If you wanted to move a little further over to the right or to the left inside of the vehicle, you could even do that too. This is where you would adjust your position inside of the car. Once you're happy with your view, and where you would, what you would like to see from inside the car when you're driving. Come down here to the bottom, select Save Car. It will bring up this save directory. You can name it or not. For the most part, you can just leave this as a default. Hit Save, and now you will keep that field of view every time you come back into this car. Now, you have to do that for every car. It's not a universal edit, but this is the one way that will allow you to adjust yourself physically inside of the car without affecting your field of view. And that's it. 
you have your correct field of view set for your triples inside of iRacing. Now, I mentioned another theory in regard to distance inside the car, specifically the distance from your eyes to the center monitor. Now, according to some experts in sim racing and real world racing, this should always be set at 540 millimeters in regard to the viewing distance in the field of view calculator of your eyes to the center monitor, regardless of what it actually is. Now, I won't go into the specifics here as it's entirely too much material to cover. However, the information is from individuals much smarter than me in these matters. And if you want to give this a try, it's just a simple adjustment here. Just use 540 millimeters in the block for the measurement for your eyes to the center of the monitor instead of your actual measurement. Again, this is just a theory, but I will say that I have converted and, to, and change this permanently and in my case. I recommend trying it both ways and make your own decision. If this video helped you, consider hitting that like button. It really helps the channel. You can also subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when I upload any additional content. Follow me on Twitter to find out when I'm streaming. Thanks for watching.